construction site of the Mutual of Omaha Tower, which will provide more than 4,000 people a place to work and has spurred additional developments through Omaha's core running all the way to Elkhorn. The expansion project occurring at the University of Nebraska Medical Center where medical breakthroughs will be made and the soon to be redeveloped Tranquility Park that will be a premier youth multi-sports complex and tournament tournament facility. As you travel around seeing these developments, the most important part is that you can feel safe. Mayor Sothert has made public safety her highest priority by working closely with Omaha Police and Omaha Fire to ensure that they have the necessary incentives, tools, and equipment to recruit and retain the best of the best, including adding $9 million to the police budget for officer salaries. Mayor Stothard has accomplished all of this while managing a balanced budget that prioritizes the responsible handling, handling of taxpayer dollars and improves the taxpayer experience. Omaha is on the move thanks to Mayor Sothard's leadership. I'm excited and proud that she will continue to build this bright future for all of Omaha. It's my privilege to introduce our friend, the current mayor of Omaha, the next mayor of Omaha, Mayor Gene Stothard. Well, good, good morning, everybody, and thank you for being here. And thank you, Governor Heineman, for the kind introduction. Throughout my career, you have been a good friend, you've been a mentor, and we always call him my campaign good luck charm. So I'm glad that he's here today. But Governor, let's do it again, shall we? So today I am announcing that I will be a candidate for mayor in 2025. Okay, that's done, we can all go home now. <laughs> but you know what, as the governor said, we really have a record of progress, determination, and success. And together we do have the momentum to build Omaha into the city of the future. Momentum starts with strong, trusted leadership to turn vision into results, to empower citizens, and also to set and exceed goals. Omaha's future depends on a strong foundation that we now have in place. We are focused on public safety, employment and business growth, investment in our urban core and historic neighborhoods, strong financial management, and creating opportunities for everyone. My priorities are based on the goals that have a positive impact on our citizens, improving public safety, managing the city budget and keeping taxes low, creating economic development and job growth, and to improve the taxpayer experience. I am especially proud of the impressive strides that we have made to make Omaha a safer city. Overall crime in Omaha was down last year. 14% lower than in 2022, with one exception, and that's motor vehicle theft. Omaha is not immune to the national trend of Kia and Hyundai theft. And the number of non-fatal shootings dropped 29% from 2023, which is pretty amazing. This is an important barometer that Chief Schmatter watches closely. Our clearance rate Solving crimes and making arrests is up. Last year, the homicide clearance rate in Omaha was 100%, and that's almost unheard of. The successful strategies that we have created to reduce gun violence, improve police community relations, and fund youth employment programs are being adopted now by other cities and other communities to have similar impact and sustainable outcomes. Our commitment to your safety, community partnerships, and the investments that we have made in personnel, technology, and in training are paying off. We will continue to be a leader in innovative policing and emergency response with a real-time operations center that will benefit citizens with faster response times to emergency calls and threats to public safety. Planning is underway for a public safety headquarter, a combined police and fire facility to modernize technology and bring our first responders under one roof for vital coordination and communication. We are addressing community mental health needs. Last year, Omaha police responded to more than 10,000 calls 
that involves someone in a mental health crisis, more than double the calls that we had in 2021. Our professionally trained co-responders provide compassionate intervention that can save lives. As police agencies across the country uh, compete for recruits, restoring the number of sworn officers through higher salaries and expanded recruiting will remain my top priority. A new police precinct downtown and a new fire station in rapidly growing Northwest Omaha will keep up with the increasing demands for emergency services. Through enforcement, crime prevention and intervention, one city can definitely set an example and make a difference. And we are proud to be that city. Managing the taxpayer's money is a great responsibility and I take that very, very seriously. I have reduced Omaha property tax levy four times, more than 8% since I have been mayor. Our levy is at its lowest rate since 2010. I do understand, however, that these strong steps are really not enough to lower the total property tax bill for most homeowners because property valuation increases are so significant. Valuations that are set by the Douglas County Assessor make home ownership unaffordable to some of our citizens. I will continue to challenge all other taxing entities to reduce their levies and I will lower our levy again in 2025 while improving critical services. I expanded funding for road repair and rehab and greatly increased the pace of resurfacing. We are preparing to open the new central library and expand services offered throughout our library system. We negotiated the new modern trash collection contract. I increased salaries for police officers to improve recruiting and retention. And we, rec we created a long-term plan to replace fire apparatus to improve safety for our firefighters and our citizens, all while reducing the tax levy. We also maintained one of the highest bond ratings that are, are possible. So this can be done. As families, businesses, and city government recover from the financial impacts of the pandemic, we have distributed the federal pandemic relief funds we received right into the community where it is needed the most. Our largest commitment, $60 million, is our, part met, our partnership with Front Porch Investments to create and preserve affordable housing and make it accessible for renters and for buyers. Our successful program has been selected as a case study to be published as a model for cities trying to address the challenges of affordable housing. We provided over $100 million in rent and utility assistance so families can stay in their homes. We are also investing in city park improvements, nonprofits that offer programs for our youth, gang prevention and intervention, job training, health care, and mental health services. We are improving safety and security in our business improvement districts. And we completed a program to help our hotel partners after the devastating effects of COVID on the travel and tourism industry. The comeback is real. Hotel occupancy in Omaha is the highest it has been in 16 years. More visitors are coming to Omaha, spending money and paying taxes in our hotels, stores and restaurants. Visitor spending increases the city's revenue and therefore we can lower taxes. When I visited Omaha for the first time 30 years ago, and I think this is important to put it in perspective, there was no string of pearls along Abbott Drive. There was no CHI Health Center, Charles Schwab Field, Bob Carey Pedestrian Bridge, or the Holland Performing Arts Center. That's just been in 30 years. Over the last 11 years, with financial support from our philanthropic donors and trust in city leadership, we now have a great and growing reputation as a destination for sports, competitions, conventions, entertainment, recreation, and leisure. We've added Steelhouse Omaha, the Tanaska Center for Arts Engagement, the Kiewit Luminarium, and our spectacular riverfront parks. The Baby Bob Pedestrian Bridge will open this fall, and Union Soccer plans to build its new stadium on the riverfront. We are starting work on what may be called the Tower District in central downtown, with much more to be announced. A healthy urban core includes housing, jobs, commerce, education, arts and entertainment, and transportation, 
like the modern streetcar. It will create a vibrant, accessible community that attracts new businesses and young professionals. The streetcar is a driver for development. As we just saw two weeks ago with the announcement that one of Omaha's most successful resident developers will convert Central Park Plaza into more than 700 new apartments. New Style Development says this project would have not happened without the streetcar. This type of high value development along the streetcar route is exactly what we expected. By the end of this year, more than $1.2 billion in new development will be underway along the streetcar route and it hasn't even started construction. We are actively pursuing the first streetcar extension to North Omaha. It will connect riders to jobs, education and services and create affordable housing and commercial development along the route. And we are also working with Nebraska Medical Center on its plan to add the streetcar route through its campus. Across Omaha, growth and development is at a record high level. Historic North and South 24 streets are being revitalized, building momentum again, and creating new spaces for innovation, entrepreneurship, and urban living. Epley Airfield is expanding, adding gates and improving services, including international flights and customs. The new Central Library is under construction at 72nd and Dodge, and it will open in 2006. Updated plans for the crossroads shows a redesigned higher value development. Expansion of CHI Health Center will make Omaha more competitive for major conventions and events. Tranquility Park Sports Center, surrounded by Tranquility Commons, will attract regional and national tournaments and provide greater access to sports for all young players. We will break ground for Levi Carter Park, multi-purpose athletic and community center this fall. Avenue One and Hartwood Preserve create business and entertainment options in West Omaha. And we are moving ahead with an inland port authority in Northeast Omaha to coordinate new development, businesses, and jobs. And we expect state approval on the inland port authority this spring. Since I was elected to serve as your mayor, we have issued more than 181,000 building permits for a value of nearly $11 billion. And that's really amazing. And that is momentum. For decades, the streets in Omaha have been neglected and repairs have been underfunded. We challenged that with our Roadmap to Better Streets bond issue in 2020. With voter approval, we created and funded the Street Preservation Fund with a $200 million bond issue. Since then, we have repaired over 600 lane miles of road and spent an additional $150 million on our roads. And we are doing this without raising taxes. This spending is in addition to our major road projects. Our city infrastructure must match our potential. And this program provides long-term solutions rather than patching potholes over and over again. I am excited to lead this important community-driven process to rewrite our city's master plan. The current plan was adopted in 1997. This plan is required by the city charter and by state law, and it, out, it outlines long-term vision and goals for development and growth. We do have challenges. Every growing city does. I hired the first homeless service coordinator to ensure access to services so more people are able to make a successful transition from homelessness to safe housing, employment, health care, and other necessities. In our first year, over 90 unsheltered households have moved into shelter, safe housing, or have been connected to services that make their transition successful. I do share the public concern about encampments on private and public property. New city initiatives to provide emergency housing and eliminate litter will address these concerns. No one should be homeless. Stable housing and services are solutions to end homelessness. We are also addressing the increasing number of fatal crashes on our roads. It is not uncommon for the number of traffic deaths in Omaha to exceed the number of homicides. After a detailed study, a lot of public input and data analysis, we completed the Vision Zero Action Plan. We have 25 recommendations and a list of priority road safety projects to reach the goal of ending fatalities in Omaha 
by 2045. And this is an ambitious goal, but it's necessary. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Substantial public input has also been received as we develop the Omaha Climate Action and Resilience Plan. Cities that prioritize climate action and resiliency are making a commitment to better quality of life for their citizens and improving the outlook for businesses and for industry. I am very proud of the progress that we have made. It will take initiative, experience, and commitment to continue this great momentum and get results to make Omaha a world-class city. Working together as trusted partners, we share one common goal, and that is to make Omaha a city of opportunity for everyone. We have a greater achievements ahead. I love working with all of you and for you, and I look forward to continuing my service to Omaha. Thank you all for being here today. <laughs> Questions? Mayor, why are you running it? What made you decide to do this? I think I just said a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? It, it, number one, I will tell you this. I love my job, and I, I hope it shows. <clears throat> we have such great momentum right now in Omaha, and it's about a fourth term is all about trust, it's about momentum, and it's about results. And I think you can see all of the things that we have achieved in my last, well, two term, two and a half terms, but there is so much more that we want to keep moving forward. There is a saying that cities never sit still. You are either moving forward and, and, and changing or you're declining and going backwards. We want to be that city that continues to move forward and develop. And so that's why I'm running. I'm the person to get that done. Mayor, before your election as a November race, are you going to vote for Donald Trump for president? Why are we talking about the presidential race? <laughs> I think the mayor would like to know how the mayor is going to vote for the president. Well, let's, let's see who the candidates are. Let's see who they are first, okay? But I'm a Republican, and I vote Republican. You know that, Joe Jordan. If Donald Trump is a candidate, I'm voting for Donald Trump. Do you think the November election will have any play on what happens in Omaha later on? I don't think so at all. You know, we're announcing now, and I think in all fairness that uh, I need to announce now, um, people ask me, I can't go through the grocery store without somebody saying, are you running again? <clears throat> so I think in all fairness, I, I need to announce now. I don't think it's going to have what's happening in, in you know, the May primary and the November election are going to have any effect on the city of Omaha elections. I really don't. Did you ever reach a point where you were thinking, I've done enough, maybe I should set aside and you know, enjoy life a little bit more now? I enjoy life now, Roger. I mean, I, 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 again, I love what I do, and, and I'm excited to go to work every day. I have some of my staff is here today. I have the best staff and the best directors I think the city of Omaha has ever had. And, you know, it excites me to go to work every day. I definitely have another four years in me, and I want to do it again. Um, I just think of the progress we have made, the trust that we have built. That makes a big difference in the progress that's going forward. When we talk about some of these big projects we have going and the philanthropic help that we have had to get it done, um, it's, it's unique in the United States. When I used to go to meetings with other mayors, they were amazed at the amount of partnerships, public-private partnerships, that we have developed, my team has developed, um, with the private sector, and we get so much private dollars. That's because of the trust that we have developed and, and the success that we have shown people. We can get these things done. Look at the riverfront. I mean, that's pretty amazing. 400 million of private money, and the city put in 60. Look at the library. They have exceeded their goal. The new library at 72nd and Dodge, $150 million building, they have exceeded their fundraising goal. And, and, and those that are donating know that that library is going to be a city-owned and operated library. This is really unique, and that's built on trust. And I think that that's really important to remember. We have the momentum. We have success that we can show. And people trust what we are doing. That's going to keep us going forward. Mayor, you govern a blue city, more registered Democrats than Republicans. I do. Republicans. Mm -hmm. Have you been that good, or is the Omaha Democratic Party just that bad? <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
Joe Jordan, I, you never surprise me. I, no, I, you know what? I want to say that my, what the job we are doing is, is, is that good. I do want to say that. Because you know what? When I became mayor the first time in 2013, I said, I'm going to be the mayor for everyone. Everyone in Omaha. I didn't care your political party, the color of your skin. I didn't care what your gender is. I will represent you, and I will represent all of you. And I think people see that. And I think people see that with our administration. I'll be honest with you, the people that work in my office, I have about 19 people that work in my office, I, I don't know half of their political party. I hire them because they're good and because they represent Omaha well and they work hard. And so I think people see that. I think people see that in elections and I think people see our progress and what we have done. We've been very honest with people. And um, you know that there's a lot of independence also. And uh, our campaign is, is very strategic and we work really, really hard and we tell people what we're gonna do and we get it done. Mayor, last year the sales and restaurant tax revenue brought in 29 million more than expected into Omaha. Do we ever expect to repeal the restaurant tax or is that money beneficial to spread out, spend on projects like the uh, open initiatives? You know, the restaurant tax was imposed over 10 years ago. Um, and and uh, during, the, uh, during the Subtle administration, I was on the city council then, and he also, Mayor Subtle, raised property taxes quite a bit. I promised that I was going to reduce the mayor's taxes. After of studying what was going on and listening to the people of Omaha, their number one issue was property taxes. And we have reduced property taxes. Like I said, we've reduced them 8.5%. And I'm going to reduce it again in 2025 because we just pretty much finished up with that budget. The restaurant tax is bringing in more and more and more money every year. We predict in 2025 it'll bring in about $42 million a year, the restaurant tax. It certainly has not affected negatively the restaurant business, certainly not. All that money, that's an occupation tax, it goes into the general fund. The general fund goes to fund every department. So that if, you, if I would take $42 million out of the general fund budget right now, it would really hurt our fire and police department because fire and police are two thirds of our entire budget. So no, I have no intention to try to eliminate the restaurant tax because it's number one, it's not hurting the industry and it's bringing in a lot of revenue into our general fund that goes to fund all of our city departments. People are still focused on property tax and so am I. Do you expect a streetcar to be a message that it gets across to voters and either galvanize or deter them? Um, I don't think the streetcar will be an issue at all in my campaign. I really don't. I think, you know, the more that we get out and we talk about the streetcar, the benefits, how it's being funded, um, how it's going to run, how it'll affect downtown, we can turn almost every person that is a naysayer or undecided into a supporter. I think if we just get the message out again of the benefits of it and how it's being funded, people come on board and they, they are, they're either neutral or they support it. So I don't think it's going to be an issue at all. And I think it's going to bring great development and promise to downtown. I said earlier that by the end of this year, we'll have $1.2 billion worth of development along the streetcar line. When Todd Heastead announced Central Park Plaza the, a couple weeks ago, he said this would not happen without the streetcar. It was predicted, we had a company called Municap we hired to scrub our funding model for the streetcar. They were in town for like nine months. They looked at every parcel along the streetcar line and they estimated that in the next 15 years, we would have $2 billion worth of development along the streetcar line. We'll have, we'll have 1.2 by the end of this year and it hasn't even started construction. So I think when we, we just got to continue getting the message out about this development that we said that will happen, that will really pay for the streetcar entirely, it's happening. And it's happening quickly and it's happening already. Mayor, you said you want to cut the tax levy again in 2025? I will, if the city council approves it. <laughs> <laughs> Governor Pillen has been saying that the problem with governmental units is, is spending. Yes, I think I can. And you know, the, the thing of it is, and I've talked to the governor a lot about this, we have, if you look at the history of the city of Omaha, 
our year over year spending has been, I've tried to keep it 4% or less, but our revenue, actually we have 10 year period where our revenue increase sometimes isn't even 1%. Sometimes it's around 1%. The average is much lower than 3% our average year over year revenue increase. And when that happens, we quit spending. That's what we do. We don't spend, we try to modify the budget as much as we can so we can live within those revenues that we get in the city. Now the last couple years, we've had a real boost in what our revenue is, much more than the average is. And when we get that boost, what we do is we buy things then that we couldn't buy before because we were conserving buy things like new fire trucks and new medic units and new snow plows. These are the things that we buy when we have the revenue to do it. But our average is less than 3%. And so, yes, we could live with that. There has to be some caps removed uh, if we can live with that all the time throughout, throughout every year, throughout our good times and bad times, because we want to continue growth. So I would like to see like our debt payment out of that, uh, to have an exception for debt payment. I want to be able to pay our debt. You know, I want to be able to continue to grow like we like to, we annex and we grow our city. And that is one way to reduce taxes and keep them down is you broaden your tax base. You broaden your tax base, you can bring your taxes down because more people are paying. And so, you know, those are the things that we have done. And I've talked to the governor many times about it. If it's 3%, the revenue cap is 3%, we'll make it work. But there has to be some exceptions that are lifted. A couple of years ago, a lot was made of times people were spending outside of the city. Mm -hmm. You're concerned that whoever runs against you is going to make that an issue? Mm. No, I'm not concerned, <clears throat> and they will make it an issue. I'm certain, certain of that. If you look at my first two terms, I, people would say, don't you ever take a vacation or take a break. I hardly went out a town at all the first two terms. And yes, I did take some extra time. I had a husband that died of suicide. I had a 95-year-old mom that I was trying to move out of her home in St. Louis. Uh, my sister and I spent many days in the hot summer with a dumpster in her front yard trying to clear her house out. So for myself and my family, I did take some extra time off. And I don't think anybody could fault me for that. And so have I taken a lot of time off since then? No, I haven't. I really haven't. So, And they could look at that. They could look any time and, and see what my you know, what my time away. But when I am away from Omaha, I am still engaged. I still talk to the police chief every day. I still talk to my staff every day, and I still know what's going on. So, you know, somebody will bring that up. I'll admit, I did take some time off, but I had a reason to take it off, and I, I don't think anybody could fault me for the reasons that I did. So will you be in town more yeah, if you get reelected? Uh <laughs> Chris Burbach, I'm in town all the time. Or to, or to say I'm gone a lot is, is really ridiculous. It really is. So, and, and, and I, I do my job. I'm down at City Hall all the time. If you remember, I had a, a spinal fusion and back surgery, and I was back to work in my office in a week. So I don't think anybody could say I'm gone too much. And I have never, never not done my job or neglected my job. Other questions. Is there anything that you haven't done the last three years that you want to push forward in your next term should you win? You know, I just think that, again, continuing the momentum and all of these projects that I mentioned that have already started, I want to see them through to the end. And there are a lot of other projects, obviously, that I know about that I'm working with developers about that we haven't even mentioned or had an announcement yet. And they're coming soon. So there's so much momentum and so much we're involved with and so much that my staff and I are working on. I want to see these things through. But again, I mean, I always have goals. I want Omaha to remain a safe city. You know, when people come from out of town, the one thing, and like during the College World Series, the one thing I hear the most is I feel so safe here and it's so clean here. And they always say, if America can make a city safe and it's clean, get the garbage picked up, the streets clean, you're doing pretty good. So, so, and I hear that a lot about Omaha. And, and when we talk about public safety and we talk about our crime rate here, it is so under control now because of our great police department and the job they're doing. And we've done a lot of work with that. You know, since I've been mayor, we've budgeted 100 more police officers than we had before. We've expanded the gang unit. We've done a lot with our mental health co-responder program. We added a new precinct out in Elkhorn. 
We've done things that have been talked about for years and years and years, and that is all showing with these low crime rates now. So I'm very proud of the work that the Omaha Police Department does, but it's con you've got to continue on with it. Right now we're 100 officers low, and that is not good. And we are trying our best by increased salaries and increased recruiting to build that up again because that, it won't last forever if we're running that short. So these things are always on my mind, and we will continue to work on those. Other questions? Mary, you talk about, you praised Chief Smart, not just today, but quite often. Uh, you talked about the restaurant tax. Both those were left to you by Jim Sully. Mm -hmm. They were kind of party gifts from the Sully administration. You ever wonder where you came without those party gifts? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I mean, it, it is what it is. I ran for mayor, and I accept what I, what, what the legacy, what had happened before me, and uh, I knew what I needed to do to make Omaha a better city. So, you know, the restaurant tax was passed while I was on the city council. Obviously, everyone knows I voted against it. Um, if you recall, during those conversations with the restaurant tax, we wanted to put, it was $13.5 million more in the fire and police pension. <clears throat> it was estimated that this increase, this two and a half penny on the restaurant tax increase, would generate about $14 million worth of new revenue. That's what it was estimated, $14 million. So it would just about cover what the additional funds we needed. Now, it doesn't say anything in the restaurant tax ordinance that all of that money goes to the fire and police pension. It doesn't even mention it. It's, it's an occupation tax, and all occupation tax go into the general fund. And like I said before, now it's generating $42 million, $42 million a year, much more than the $14 million we thought. All that money goes into the general fund. We're paying the extra money that we committed to the fire and police pension, but there's no reason to put it all in the fire and police pension. It goes to fund everything else. And like I said before, if you add the budget for the fire department, the police department, that's two thirds of our entire budget. So if we took 42 million out, who's it gonna hurt the most? The biggest part of the budget, it'll, it'll affect fire and police the most. And that is a move I will not make. Other questions? You guys are pretty quiet back there today. Any questions from anybody in the audience? How can we help your campaign? Well, you know, our, thank you for asking that. Uh, can, you know, campaigns are always difficult. Um, I never take anything for granted. I work really, really hard at all of them, and I will with this one too. I will say that to most of you that we probably won't really start vigorously campaigning until January because there is a May primary and a November election that people are focused on and need to be focused on now. As you all know, the city elections are independent. They will be an April primary, and about five weeks later, there will be a May general election, and then you take office again in June. And so it'll, it's fast and furious. All seven city council members are up at the same time. So we can all use your volunteer help and just spreading the word, you know, like we always ask you to do. Uh, we'll be out there knocking on doors just like we always did and uh, doing everything that we feel like we need to do to get the word out and to ask people for their votes. And so we all, we could use all of your help like we always do. And we always appreciate all of that help. I thought you were gonna say write a bigger check. Right, <laughs> uh, you know, big checks are always helpful too. There's no, there's no doubt about that. Oh, and I, that, okay, I'm gonna say something. I'm surprised you didn't ask because my, um, my campaign account is open to the public to see what's in there. You look at the NADC, you could see what I have in there. And I certainly don't have the amount I had when I ran for my third term, and that is because I was unsure whether I was gonna run for a fourth term, and I didn't wanna keep on doing fundraisers, asking people for money if I wasn't going to use it. But uh, fundraising is something that I, I, I gotta say, I, I enjoy doing it. I mean, it's part of, of having a campaign. You need money to run it. And we will, what we will do between now and the end of the year is we will have some fundraisers and build that account up. But I have a, a lot of supporters and a lot of people that are, will continue to be supporters. And um, I called quite a few people yesterday that are my bigger supporters and told them what I was doing today. And uh, there wasn't one person that didn't say, oh, we're on board. So I think the raising the money will be something that will take a time and effort, but we certainly will do it. And we will raise enough money to run a very good, strong campaign. When did you decide to run? 
When did I decide to run? A month ago, a week ago. No, I would say, I mean, I've, I've thought about it this whole term, whether this third term, whether I wanted to do a fourth term or not. I think the, the decision to absolutely do it was probably a matter of three or four months ago that I really, just working on daily, every day, day after day, working on all of these things we have going on and seeing the success and seeing the progress. You know, your first four years as mayor, you can talk about your vision you have, and I did, talked about what my vision was, but you can't get all of this done in four years. You just can't. And you know, you could be working with the philanthropic community and working with the developers and you, but, but you can't get it all done in four years. And that's why that the trusted, experienced leadership is so important. Because I mean, there, there's no risk with me. Everybody knows what kind of mayor I am, how I govern, what I will be as far as taxes, what I will be, what I'll be conservative with. You, you know that already with me. And I think we just gotta keep this momentum going. And so the more I thought about it, I thought, you know what, we gotta keep the momentum going. There's a lot of great things in the pipeline now that'll be announced soon. And I'm the person to get it done. And I thought, I, I wanna run again. Yes, yeah. I think it's important to put the momentum in the context where interest rates and construction costs were um, had construction starts down 80% across the country. So thank you for that. Yeah, and construction, I mean, we all know it that are involved in a lot of these projects, and construction cost has gone up significantly. I just, parking garages, you know, we build parking garages a lot because we pay for it with the revenue that it produces. And I recall when I was first mayor, 2013, the parking garage with an average of maybe 24,000 a stall, it's more than doubled that now. And some, some parking garages even more than that. And so that's just an example of the increased cost. But our job is to work with the developers to get these things done. And you know, as a city, sometimes we have to say no, but I've got such a great department. Dave Fancel has done such a great job in planning and they, all, they have the attitude now, if we have to say no, we're gonna say, but let us help you figure out a way to get this done. And you know, we, we build garages, we do infrastructure, we do roads, we do whatever we can to make these developments work. Um, you know, like the, the crossroads, we just have a, a brand new um, higher density design for the crossroads. And I like the way it looks a lot, but we've done a lot of infrastructure for that already. It helps some of these big projects be more affordable for the developer. And so the city has been engaged. I mean, every, every department, every department right now, I think is so engaged. Parks department is really engaged now with uh, what we're doing up at Levi Carter Park in our park, um, the sports facility at, out at Tranquility. I mean, these are things that you just don't see that often. And now there's multiple things going on. That's because we have great directors in all of our departments. And you know what, all of the directors except City attorney, fire chief, and police chief are hired at the mayor's, they call it at the mayor's will. And a new mayor could come in and say, you're all gone. I'm gonna hire somebody new. And that's an important thing to keep in mind too. We really have got a, a momentum going and a good thing going with these people that are working for the city now and working for you now. And I wanna see them stay there. Any other questions? Hal Dobb, I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> you're terrific. We're glad you're running again. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you coming. Hey guys, Jacqueline Fernandez here at the Alert Center. We were just listening to um, Omaha Mayor Jean Stothert. She plans to run for re-election. Um, she initially ran back in 2013, and if you were just listening, you heard the Q&A session with a bunch of reporters who were already there, um, just chatting a little bit about, thank you, Gina, thank you. Um, Gina just gave me um, 
an update from our website, www.wt.com, where she's been following along as well with um, one of the quotes from Mayor Stothert. So she says, quote, I love my job and I hope it shows. We have such great momentum right now in Omaha. She said, noting that her fourth term will focus on results. There's so much more that we want to keep moving forward. There is saying that cities, there's the saying that cities never sit still. You're either moving forward and changing or you're declining and moving backwards. We want to be that city that continues to move forward and develop. So that's why I'm running, she says. I'm the person to get that done, end quote. Um, a quote from Mayor Jean Stothert saying that she is running for re-election. Um, now, if you are just joining us, we are talking about the mayor's statement this morning. She was initially introduced at 10 o'clock about 40 minutes ago by former Nebraska Governor Dave Heineman. Um, and according to her news release that she sent out, she was focusing on four priorities in this re-election campaign. So improving public safety, managing the city's budget, creating job growth, economic development, and improving the taxpayer experience. Um, some of the notes that I took when I was listening to um, the mayor, she said uh, about solving crime and making arrests. She says those numbers um, have gone up. She called it a quote, community partnership. So working in tandem with the police department, working in tandem um, with the fire department, with uh, first responders, et cetera. Um, she also mentioned the uh, public safety headquarters that will be built. She wants all the first responders under one roof together. So um, she mentioned that would be an easier way for them to communicate with each other and um, with the top priority, of course, keeping the community safe. Um, along those lines, she also mentioned community mental health health needs at, with OPD. They responded to more than 100 uh, mental health needs. She um, calls this a compassionate intervention that seems to be working in our city. Um, she talked about maintaining higher salaries and retention rates for officers. Um, so she expanded funding for roads and repairs. She's prepared to open the new library. This is kind of when she was listing down the things that she's um, accomplished as mayor of the city. Uh, she talks about, again, increasing police salaries, uh, retaining retaining the police officers that we do have now and um, hopefully getting more. At one point she did mention we are about 100 officers low here in Omaha. So this is something that um, if reelected, she really wants to continue to work on as well. Um, and she mentioned these things and said she did all of this by reducing the tax levy. So um, she said along those lines, she spent $60 million for the longest long-term investment to create proven affordable housing. And she says um, this this model that she's working towards was chosen as a, um, a case study. And she says this development, in essence, um, will really end up helping the community um, at large. Now, she also talked about the streetcar during the Q&A session with reporters that was brought up again. Um, and in her opinion, she said that, you know, uh, most of the people she talked with, they're either on board or they're uncertain. So it's her job to get back in there and kind of convince people this is the way to go. Um, she says the development is underway. She says that, um, you know, this will be a good thing for local businesses. She says she's already discussing an expansion for the current project that is in the works. Um, and she says ultimately this development will pay for itself through um, city taxes and whatnot. She discussed Epley Airfield expanding. She talked about spending $150,000 on roads without increasing taxes. So again, this is, um, she mentioned property taxes in Omaha is one thing that concerns most citizens who live here. So this is something that she's addressing head on and says she's working towards um, continuing to lower if reelected as well. Um, she also briefly mentioned problems with encampments on private property. And she says that issue is also being addressed um, in that Q&A. Um, you know, as, as that quote that I mentioned earlier, I mean, she says, we want to be the city that continues to move forward and develop. So that's why I'm running. I'm the person to get that done. So development, she says, is important for our city. We've seen a lot of projects on the roads and, and throughout the city of Omaha. Um, so this is something important that um, she says she's uh, focused on here as well. She says she wants to continue the momentum. Um, one thing of note, she said she is working on all these projects and she would like to see them through to fruition um, if reelected um, as mayor. She also said um, one of the questions was what can you know we do at home to kind of help with her campaign. Um, and she said the campaign really won't take off until January. Of course, this is an election year. So I'm um, focusing on the presidential election in November. But she says, um, you know, get the word out, come out and vote, this kind of thing. Um, and she says she'll raise enough money for a very strong campaign. 
Um, so these are just some of the items that Mayor Jean Stothert mentioned for re-election. If we take a look at uh, our website here, we have all of this. We have the Breaking Live banner on our website as well. So that, of course, is a um, another place where you can check for the latest updates on our website, www.wwt.com. And until then, we'll bring you the very latest both on air and online. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jacqueline Fernandez.